Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein, and this is Vehicle Virgins. This is one of those days where I've got to pinch myself. I'm at Brands Hatch in the United Kingdom with the BAC Mono about to take this thing for a spin. This is one of my all-time dream cars. I remember several years ago seeing this during Monterey Car Week going, what on earth is that? This is the fastest track car money can buy. It's lightweight, it's raw, it's insane. And I'm about to drive it on the track. Here we are, welcome to Brands Hatch. Well, I can see it just up there, the BAC Mono. This is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. Sitting down as we're about to do a safety briefing, a very critical part to track days. What can you tell me about Brands Hatch? You've driven it before, right? It's a fantastic circuit. No, it's quite fast. Very fast circuit, very... There's not that many stopping points and it's very high speed. So it's high speed again, like I said. Oh boy. Uh, turn one is very steep. So you're gonna go down turn one and you're gonna be petrified. Oh no. Because you're not gonna be expecting it. Like you literally go down a dip and it feels, your stomach's gonna like leave your insides basically okay oh come on now that ain't even bullshit that's horseshit this is actually really cool look at that it's a trail breaking and down shifting exercise So guys, I honestly am thinking about buying a BAC Mono. Look at the clientele, the cars that people who own Monos have. We've got M2s, we've got Performantes, super fast, Continental GT Speed, and also V12 S Classes. You have the other car that you can drive all the time. You have the luxury car that you can cruise around in. But when the time is right, I just think about the Malibu Canyons, going to lunch with friends, imagine twice a week, driving a BAC Mono out to lunch on some of the best roads in the world. This is a new idea for me, but I'm really thinking about it, guys. So hopefully, after I drive this, I've got a better idea about what the BAC is truly like. Hello. Well, Archie and Tony just got kicked off the track because the GT3 RS is too loud. You have to lift and short shift in a couple spots to make sure that it doesn't overtake the reading, but uh, they got black flagged twice. So now he's gonna bring the AMG GTR. Looks like you're a badass or something. I'm too loud. Look at that. Tony has brought his AMG GTR because this fella got them kicked off. Well, no, the car itself is just too loud. No, not. Oh, we're still going. Still rolling. Oh yeah, we got yeah, we're still going. What are you gonna say now? Just gonna say it's a pleasure to be on VehicleVirgins.com. <laughs> this thing is absolutely menacing. Proper track weapons, this thing and a GT3 RS, I'm jealous. GT3 RS is better. I've of course it is, of course track. it is. I've driven both this too. This is just understeer central. Yeah, yeah. No, understeer central. You mean oversteer. Sorry. I'm bringing one of the founders 
founders of the company to talk about what went into creating something like this and why why did you start BAC? That's a good question. We get asked, asked that a lot actually. We, um, my brother and I were racing. Uh, we both had nice road cars. Uh, we had a design engineering business and we wanted to create a car that we didn't see anywhere else. We, we, we wanted to create something that wasn't any more to do with transport. If you imagine all of the vehicles have a transport legacy, they're about moving people. Whereas things like skis and snowboards and canoes and parachutes, they're about just doing the sport. Yeah. And we thought, what would a car be like if it was just about doing that sport? Just about doing the action of driving, nothing else. Um, having said that, when we created it, we did think about someone using it with place for a helmet and place to lock the steering wheel, things like that. So it's not completely impractical, but it's focused purely on driving. I think that's why I like this and I'm so excited today. Obviously, it's a super cool car, right? But it fits in with my love for specific vehicles so well. The recent vehicles that I bought, the Aperta, the 600 LT, the SVJ, are all the most track-focused, hardcore variants of the more normal supercars. I want something that's raw, that's engaging, that's lighter, that has stiffer suspension. And this went, we don't need a passenger seat. We don't need any of the things that a normal road car has, yet you can drive this on the road. So just imagining driving this in the Malibu canyons, driving this to go get a carton of milk and sticking it in there, going to In-N-Out Burger, or just driving it in a group of friends and then taking it to Thermal, I'm like super excited and I haven't even driven this thing yet. I'm actually more excited to drive this than the Koenigsegg yesterday and that is saying something. The stats on this thing are absolutely ridiculous in many ways. So I'm gonna tell you about the engine. 2.5 liter inline four. That doesn't sound that cool, right? but it makes 305 horsepower. That's 122 horsepower per liter. But the reason 305 horsepower is cool is because of the weight. This weighs just 1,276 pounds. I bet you've never actually even heard of a road legal car that weighs less than 2,000 pounds. In fact, the new McLaren Senna touted for weight loss You'd have to add two of these plus a really fat driver to equal one Senna. That's pretty insane. Let's go around back, shall we? The suspension geometry in this thing is absolutely ludicrous. We've got inboard pushrod activated double wishbone suspension. And as you can tell, the theme of this car, lightweight, track focused, incredibly fast, good handling. It's essentially a Formula One car for the road. And if you look at it, it's a single seater center positioned car. I mean, what other cars available are there, truly, that have a seating position like this with a power to weight ratio like that that can lap tracks faster than Senna's, faster than La Ferrari's, faster than P1 GTR's? And the answer is there's only one car, and that's this one. And today, I'm gonna drive it around the track. The gearbox on this thing is incredible and unlike anything else in modern day road cars. Everyone's going to automatic gearboxes or twin clutch setups. This is a sequential gearbox. Six speed sequential shifts in just 30 milliseconds. That's faster than any dual clutch gearbox. And it also saves upwards of 70 pounds over using a double clutch. Sure, it's not quite as smooth, but it shifts so fast. The gearbox is so light. It's pneumatically controlled. The sounds this makes when you click the button, when you throw it into reverse, it's just savage. This car is all about fun and speed and it's probably gonna be the most fun, and I know that it's the fastest. So I'd say, job well done. So when I originally saw the BAC Mono during Monterey Car Week, I thought to myself, I want one of those more than anything, but how is that practical in any way, shape, or form? Now, it doesn't have a second seat, so you can't use it like that. It doesn't have a roof, so if it's raining, it's not ideal. But other than that, it's actually quite practical. So check this out. You can store your helmet or a bag or some groceries in here. Honestly, you could put an overnight bag in there if you pack any sort of tablet reasonable. You can put your tablet in there. Oh, look at that. It's I like didn't know that. That is awesome. And then, one, if you're wearing a helmet, you almost probably could drive this in the rain, but if you live in an area where it's sunny at all times, or if you just drive it 
every once in a while. I mean, if I owned one of these, I would drive it every single day. The really cool thing is the way it's designed, you can actually drive this without a helmet on. A lot of the owners drive with sunglasses and rocks aren't an issue. It's really just how much guts do you have. If randomly at 100 miles an hour, you might get the random pebble, but that's what the helmet is for. But honestly, driving around town, you don't even need a helmet. And the turning radius inside of a parking garage, parking lot, I had to maneuver around is ridiculous. So a Porsche 911 has a 10 meter turning radius. This thing, 7.9. So it's a tighter turning radius than a 911. So there you go, BAC Mono, it's actually kind of practical. See, as I said about practicality, he is literally driving his BAC Mono home right now. I am so jealous. Now that I look like a character from Monty Python, I am ready to go in this thing. I am so freaking excited. I'm basically lying down, I'm fully strapped in, and I've just been told actually how to start this up and go for a drive. So the start procedure, we're gonna push the clutch in, press and hold the power button, and then listen to the noise the transmission makes when we put this thing into first gear. So you push the clutch in, push neutral. Listen to that. Oh my God. That's awesome. All right, let's go. Guys, like the Koenigsegg yesterday, I am a bit nervous driving this. This is one of the most savage cars out there. It's the fastest around the track. It's an open wheeled car. There's gonna be air everywhere, wind everywhere, and the sense of speed is totally different. When I'm, I'm legitimately basically laying down in this car, and there's no sense of protection, so to speak, being inside of a cabin. But this is an incredible experience that's about to happen, and I'm so thankful for it, and I'm so excited to share this with you guys. And I think if this goes as well as planned, I think I might, uh, I might buy one of these things. So you know how I just filmed that video saying one of my favorite things in the world to do is to drive go-karts? This, I swear to God, felt like a larger go-kart. It was so confident. The first lap, learning the track, tons of big cars around, was a little scary, but after that, the sensation, the levels of grip, the responsiveness. At one point, I could feel I was going a little bit too quick into a turn, and I was trail braking too late. The back end stepped out like a half of an inch, but you could tell what was happening before it even happened. It's the most confident, epic, fun car I've ever driven. This is... Now I have to buy one. Seriously, this is awesome. So this is a pretty exciting moment, because yesterday I drove my all-time dream car, the Koenigsegg Aguera RS. And yesterday I said, without a doubt, that was the best car I've ever driven on Vehicle Virgins. It was savage, it was fast, it was wild. Now I've driven a BAC Mono, and I can without fail say that this is actually the best car that I have ever driven. In a straight line after about 60 miles an hour, no, it's not all that fast, relatively speaking, because I just got out of a 1300 horsepower car, but it's still stupid fast, but the responsiveness of the gearbox, the feeling of the steering wheel, just the balance of the car, this is the best thing ever. Honestly, I don't know what to say. I've literally driven between 1,000 and 2,000 different cars. I drove the Senna, and it was a mind-altering experience on what was capable in a road car. And then I drove the Koenigsegg, and it, it altered my mind again in what a road car was capable in of acceleration. And then I drove this, and, and and it warped my brain yet again. And the best part is, 
it wasn't wild and crazy. It just literally felt like an extension of my mind onto the track. And that's why this is without a doubt the best car I've ever driven and why I absolutely need to buy one. I like, I like literally need to buy one right now. Mark my words, I'm gonna have one of these in my driveway. Well, I could have made this video literally an hour long with how much I have to say about the BAC Mono. I honestly wanted to just turn the camera off for most of it and experience it myself. There's certain moments in life where they're so awesome, you just don't film it. That sounds really weird, but a BAC Mono drive is partially one of those, but it's car related, so I am going to film it. I wanted to go over some things about the driving experience. I mean, it is so raw, so connected, that all of a sudden when the car starts losing traction, it gets a little bit slippery. I mean, you really have to push it to even approach that territory. You almost know it's happening before it happens. That's how connected you are. This car doesn't have traction control, yet I was able to accidentally recover from drifts uh, when I was a little bit too hot into the corner. I had the steering angle a little off when I was too hard on the brake. But if you're in a straight line, this thing breaks like almost no other car I've ever driven. The only one that really felt similar was the Senna. And the awesome part is this thing costs like four times less than a Senna. So that's, uh, that's a good thing for my bank account. Now, the seating position is epic. You're almost lying down in a sense, but sitting upright enough to where if you're driving it on the road, it's not weird. You can get the seat custom tailored to you so it fits you perfectly. Not just different sizes, but it's almost LaFerrari-esque of the bespokeness. Now you can also get a bespoke steering wheel. Check this out. The steering wheel can actually have different patterns on the back here where your fingers go so that your hand holds it perfectly and you don't have to squeeze the wheel too much so it doesn't tire out your arms. Long story short, I talk a lot about cars that are confidence inspiring. The BMW M4 is one of them. My Speciale Aperta is definitely one of them because of its rarity it would seem scary to drive a car like that intensely, but it's not because of how confidence inspiring it is. This is the fastest track car I've ever driven. I mean, it's faster than a P1 GTR or a Senna or anything you can really name, yet it actually feels pretty easy and comfortable to drive. And that is absolutely spectacular. Well, on that note, like I said, this is absolutely the best car that I have ever driven. That is an incredibly high accolade and impressive considering yesterday I drove my ultimate dream car, the Koenigsegg Agera RS. But something about the way it brakes, it turns, it feels, the suspension. Talking about the suspension, it's actually rather compliant so that when you drive it in a bumpy canyon road, it actually doesn't offset the weight balance. It's able to absorb the bump. So I cannot imagine what driving this is like uh, on any of my favorite roads uh, in the Malibu Canyons. I, I hopefully, I'm gonna be able to do that uh, someday very shortly, but man, it is so fun. And it's really fast in a straight line, zero to 62 miles an hour in 2.55 seconds. That's Bugatti Veyron levels of acceleration. It has launch control, traction control, yet it can go around the track, uh, let's just say a little bit faster than a Bugatti Veyron, if you know what I'm saying. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.